Thank you. So it looks like we have a question from the chat. And um, so I had asked Matthew and uh, Elena to answer. Uh, the question is, we'll love to hear more about some of the elements of the program research uh, that uh, helped you move through your discomfort and into learning. And that was from uh, Amanda Whitman. Um, I can go first, I guess. Um, I would think part of at least my discomfort with the program initially was like the whole concept of balancing forms of like volunteerism and at what points is it comfortable for me or uncomfortable for me. And I found that the idea that like we created a shared research agenda with the pen on or that they really informed the formation of a research agenda uh, helped me at least with that discomfort of volunteerism because it felt like the research component or volunteering component of us like the volunteering to conduct research with them was very um, I mean that part felt very like bi-directional and ethical and didn't really feel one-sided which to me was the initial discomfort of volunteerism so yeah I would say like that helped on my side yeah I think for me um, as I kind of mentioned before some of my discomfort was just that I was in a completely different research field than I was used to um, and not really sure um, like we did learn some how to conduct, you know, community-based research, but it's not until you get there that you really have the experience. And so I was just initially nervous, like what it's going to be like, um, can we actually work with the people and help? Um, and so I remember just getting there the first night kind of like excited, but also what am I, what am I doing here <laughs> um, across the world? And I th think really for me is um, the friendships that we built and the I know we said this a lot, but the relationships with the community members um, helped me to realize that there's a lot more similarities than differences. And once those friendships were built and we were laughing and we were working on things together um, and we were just singing and just all sorts of um, having good times and, and working together, that's what really helped break down that barrier of discomfort and just allowed me to realize that it's a really great wor uh, working team. and. The fact that there was Penan students who were working with us, I think was fantastic. It wasn't just um, us as Cornell students and professors working with community elders or community members, um, which is great, but the Penan students really helped um, kind of bridge that gap and make us uh, feel comfortable. Great, thank you. I'm uh, just wondering if there's any more questions or um comments that uh, the audience would like to ask you feel free to put it in the chat or uh, you can use the raise the hand function and uh, I can ask the question directly orally. Okay. Yes, Shorna. Trying to figure out how to raise my hand. Um, <laughs> so Thank you both, uh, as well as Sebastian and Benjamin for that really insightful um, panel and sharing your perspectives. And um, Elena, you said something that really struck me, which is, um, you know, you're uh, doing research in animal science, which is very different than kind of the ethnographic um, field work in social science that we were doing and but but you said that there's some skill sets that you felt like carried carried over just and ben, Benjamin and others kind of said that as well that it's sort of how you approach and have relationships with with other people so I was wondering if if you had any um, additional uh, thoughts on that to elaborate and, and also Matt um, any kind of transferable you're also in a, a different field. And so what, what do you feel like is transferable um, in terms of what you took away from the program? Um, yeah, I can go first. So I think Sebastian highlighted this some um, in the video, but the, the skill of active listening, um, but I guess to add to that also knowing how to ask good questions. Um, and so in animal science, especially in the area of animal nutrition, um, that can look very different even state to state in the United States, but also across the world as like there's different feedstuffs that's available to animals and different ways of doing animal agriculture. Um, so just from, from that perspective, um, knowing how to ask questions, knowing how to listen, 
um, just understanding different people's experiences across the world um, is just really valuable for me as a researcher because then I can understand um, some of the feeding practices that may be going on thousands and thousands of miles um, a way that we can even use to understand um, dairy cows better here. But then just from a more holistic perspective, building relationships with um, my lab mates and my classmates and just learning to love the fact that there's so many uh, different people from different countries in my program. And even um, when we just have some time, we're out at the dairy farm late at night sampling and and we're waiting for some of those samples to to process and just deciding to ask the question to one of my lab mates, like, what was it like growing up in Honduras? Or what was it like um, studying animal science there? And and just taking that that time and that space to ask some of those questions instead of just, you know, scrolling on your phone or, or looking inwards and and realizing that time with people is is precious and it's valuable. Um, building off of all of that stuff, um, I would say I definitely, because global health research that I do now and like my career interest in global health are, we're pretty closely related in a way to the work we did in Malaysia. But one thing that definitely resonated with me and stuck out then that I apply now into the work I'm doing and want to do is that there was really great community buy-in in the work that we did with the Penon that everyone was very invested in it because they helped set the research agenda. And I found before in global health, the community-based interventions that fail are the ones where people didn't even ask the community members what they want. Whereas the research that I've been working on now where we're having um, traditional healers offer HIV testing, um, my mentor always says like the very first step she took in all of that was just going out and asking people what, like why, like what's hard, what's hard for you? Why aren't you getting an HIV test? And then once it started getting closer to that answer of traditional healers, she started asking them, okay, how can your traditional, traditional healers do this best for you? Um, so similar to what the pen on how you kind of just went and asked them, what do you want us to do with you? I feel like I apply that to global health now where it's like, okay, you guys have this health issue. Why are you having it? And what would you like in place to kind of circumvent those barriers? Great. Thank you, Shona, for the questions and uh, Elena and Matt for the answer. And um, see if there's any more questions, we'll take one more before we move on to um, sharing the Unimas students uh, reflection. Are there any other other questions? Um, I'm happy to let someone else go, <laughs> but I'll ask one more while I have, <laughs> have you two here. No one else has any. I don't see any at this time, but yeah, go ahead. Okay, well, if anyone is still thinking, please type it, type it in the chat because we'll get it in, we'll get it in. Um, but I wanted to ask a question about tech, technology. So in Long Lamai, there's typically not um, internet access. So Alana definitely was not internet access when you were there. Matt, it was um, intermittent when you were there. Could you talk about what it was, yeah, what, what what role that played in the relationship that you had with the community, being able to form with the community and with um, the Cornell and Unimas, uh, University of Malaysia Sarawak students. We were, we were very disconnected in terms of, of internet access. And so I was curious what your thoughts were on that as, as students in a very connected um, kind of world. Um, I think this goes back to what Alana was saying before, even just like when she's like running those samples late at night at like for the dairy stuff, um, how instead of like scrolling through her phone, she was inclined to just be like, so what's it like growing up in Honduras? I think that limited, like we had very limited access to Wi-Fi and stuff, but honestly, basically like none compared to like what we're used to in the US. Um, so again, I think the limited technology gave everyone more of a chance to connect with people, especially given we had such limited time being there. Um, I think it was honestly ideal that we didn't have that access to like Wi-Fi. And it was also an interesting juxtaposition because the younger community members commented on, on how they really liked when Cornell came because it kind of gave their community like, a, oh, look at all this modern technology they have, look at all these things that they're doing. And the younger people kind of liked that we were there to kind of be like a little bit of a push in that direction. Um, so it was interesting though, how in a way where I was positively experiencing not having access to those communication technologies and things like that, that the community members, at least on the younger side, were still kind of looking for that. Um, so I just thought that was like an interesting dynamic to navigate. 
Yeah, I, I agree with Matt. I thought it was fantastic that we didn't have service. Um, I remember my parents being a little nervous that that was a possibility when I left. And so when we first got there, um, just standing kind of under the cell tower and like waiting just long enough to send one message that was like, I arrived safely. I'm not going to have service for 10 days. Like, it'll be good. <laughs> and then putting away my phone um, and just being able to enjoy the time in the community. I really felt like time slowed down and just we were able to I was able to use all my focus and, and all my time to ask questions, um, tell stories, build relationships, um, even just like going and knocking on someone's door and saying, hey, you want to play volleyball? <laughs> um, just fully being in the community rather than um, being like one foot in the community and one foot still back home. And I actually um, used some of those lessons actually when I came back to Cornell um, I actually turned my phone on airplane mode, which shut off all Wi-Fi and cell service um, a few hours before I went to sleep. Um, so I could use that time to hang out um, with some friends after studying. And then I wouldn't turn it off airplane mode until a couple hours after I wait, woke up. So it really created that time and that space um, for friendship and also just for reflection. And um, it was really valuable and something I definitely want to want to keep keep doing in my life. Thank you. Great. It looks like, uh, well, thank you, Elena, and thank you, Matt, and especially thanks to Matt for coordinating and then moderating the session. And um, 